Hey heroes, Jonathan here at Night Knowledge. I'm gonna time myself. We got 10 minutes to teach you all about the UI in the First Men. So let's get straight to it. Uh, let's talk about the, the main screen. Uh, five things we should talk about. Uh, top right. Uh, top right, we have three buttons. We have the handshake button, which is basically messages from the devs to us as the players. Any important news will be here. Then this map symbol is the early access roadmap telling us what's going to happen in 2023 and 2024. Uh, if you have more more questions, always just go to the Discord. There's a lot of people there, including myself, that can be there to answer your questions for you. Uh, then there's the gear symbol, which is the change log. If you're unfamiliar, change log is just like patch notes. Uh, then there's uh, two main options you're going to be using uh, when starting a new game: either campaign, which will which will have a tutorial, and three different maps: a basically a a, a peaceful sandbox a one where there are increasingly stronger and larger waves of enemies that you have to defend against and finally one where there's a boss you have to defeat but at the corners of the map there are i guess mini bosses that you can kill to make the end boss uh weaker and then at the, the time of this video there are custom maps with uh, different types of objectives for you to do. This is not something that I'd recommend for you to do if this is your first time playing or if you still consider yourself a newbie. Uh, this is something for veteran players. This is just something for you to test out to see how good you are to play around with the game. Uh, so I'm going to jump into the game now and we were we will talk about uh, the, the UI. Once again, as always, check the chapters that I've given to you at the bottom and that will help you navigate uh, if there's certain things you want to learn about um, I, and also don't forget to check my channel uh, I have two beginner videos one just a beginner's tips video and the other one is will show you how to grow and start off the game uh, so that you get a good start on growing your village so whether you start a new game or are loading a game, you're going to come to this load screen and the top is just some flavor text and the bottom is going to have the objectives of what you have to do. That's this screen. So we're going to split up now this the UI in, in four different parts, the top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. Let's quickly go over them because uh, we are timing ourselves. So characters. Uh, you can uh, switch to any of these panels up here, all with the uh, different hotkeys. So F1 to F5. So characters, F1, crafts, F2, relations, F3, traditions, F4, and adaptations, uh, F5. So starting off with characters, something you're going to spend probably 70 to maybe 80% of your entire gameplay is going to be looking at this screen right here. So what do you need to know? It is, going to, it is going to organize these characters top to bottom by the characters who are closest to leveling or have fully leveled. And how it's tracked is by this circular, uh, by this path point column, by this circular white line. So the closer the white line becomes totally filled uh, with the white means how close they are to leveling. So Anibis is our closest person to level. It's almost fully white. She, she's 96 out of 100 path points to essentially leveling up. Whereas if we scroll all the way down, we have characters like Andrew over here, which has one path point. So his uh, circle is basically fully black, fully empty. The only thing you want to know, only other thing you want to know about this circle is that if the circle is yellow, that means you may have accidentally clicked on the level up button, but you clicked off the screen and you did not actually level up that person. So uh, that is what the yellow is telling you. So it's telling me that I, I clicked on the level up button for Flynn previously, but I maybe got distracted and I didn't actually finish leveling him up. So I can scroll through this list. I'm like, oh, Flynn, I forgot to level you up. So let me pick something for you. And then as you can see, it has now changed from a uh, uh, yellow to, to a white circle. Uh, what else do we need to know about this screen? Uh, it shows you the age. Age is important because uh, characters can age and die in this game. So you need to keep track of the age of your characters. So it'll, you'll be able to see at a glance, okay, my population is aging. I need to make sure I have babies being born and that they are um, getting jobs that will replace the people that will eventually die. Then 
at a glance, you're going to see the body, the, all the primary stats, everything from body all the way to self. So this is primarily used to see if maybe some people are not curing themselves of fatal traits, which is the thing that'll kill your characters typically. And this is also a way to assign gear. So if you have certain gear, all gear, whether it's a weapon or armor, has some sort of requirement. For example, this copper throwing spear, it requires at least 12 soul. So I can, so how am I gonna find a person with 12 soul? I simply look at the character UI and I look at this at the soul um, column, which is this this column right here, and I find characters that might be able to use it. So I can see right off the bat, uh, Mandy has 14 soul. She already has a bow though, so I don't need to worry about that. Uh, Seamus uh, also has, um, actually no, I apologize. Um, Ginger has 29 soul, crazy amount, but she actually has a scrap crossbow instead equipped. So that is what this is primarily used for. And finally, on the far right side, this tracks all of the different jobs you've assigned to these characters. Uh, what it will not show is it will not show personalities, which are typically uh, buffs uh, provided to characters. Um, and it will not show typically aptitude. So once again, buffs as well. Uh, so that is the character screen. Uh, you're going to be, as I said, using this 80% of the time. I maybe have gone over this a little bit too quickly, but that's that's the main thing. This is how you track people when you need to level them up. Uh, you need to track to see how old they are and what their stats are, and 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 at a glance, what what jobs you have available selected for your characters. Then the other 20% of the time, you're going to be looking at the crafting tab here. And uh, by scrolling down, you can look at all the different things anyone in your settlement can craft. Um, all you have to do is simply put your cursor on it and it will tell you what are the requirements uh, typically and the costs. So it's going to show you, say, this clay privy, which is a toilet. Uh, it costs three clay. We have 128 in our storage. That's what the bra that's what the number in brackets is for, and it's going to cost two water. I unfortunately don't have water. Uh, we are always uh, thirsty in our village. So up at the top there are filters. Uh, you can filter it by the color. Uh, so if you know that there is something that you need your cook to to make, uh, most or I, all, all food is typically green, so I'll, I'll filter by green and it'll show me all the different foods I can make for, for say, the main cook, which is myself, Knight. Um, and you can put on multiple filters at the same time, or you can turn them all off and it'll show you every single thing that you can craft. Uh, one thing of note is that when you select something to craft uh, and you click on it, it'll show you any of the characters that have the appropriate requirements to be able to craft it. So to make a rocky speech platform, you need to have someone that's an entertainer. So as you can see, I have three entertainers in my village, Ginger, Catherine, and Finn. And if, if I click on the character, I will then be able to select where I want to place it on my village. Okay, so that is crafts. You're gonna spend, as I said, the other 20% of your time looking at that. Then we're gonna look at the relations tab, F3. So the relations shows you the different factions in the specific map or campaign mission that you're on. Uh, the, the only thing that's really important, I guess, is this column here, the status, which tells you whether they are hostile with the negative number or, or a ally or, or friendly with a positive number. Uh, also in this column right here, quest, it will tell you different quests that are available to you. So for example, this one here says, um, if you can get a green apple for Carnip, uh, he will reward you with a Masterwork Sylvan Dagger. Um, this is the Memoria map, which is about killing the four different mini bosses on the edges of the map. And I'll just quickly scroll over here. And as you can see here, this is one of the mini bosses that the game wants you to destroy. Uh, but 
on the other map, Lindaris, which is about uh, defending against stronger and stronger waves of enemies, there will be a question mark that tracks when the next enemy wave is going to come. So you might actually use relations once in a while, but it's something that you're using, I'd say, less than 2.5% of your time, I feel, I use relations. On to the fourth uh, tab, F4, our traditions. These are unlocks for your village. So it unlocks special jobs, basically clerics, and I guess the our Candlemancer and Diviner. It uses the Unity resource, which is the white resource, and basically to unlock any specific job, you would have to select, you left click on the job. So if I want to unlock the Shadow Cleric, I need to select it, and I'll pay 750 Unity. Uh, and I'll show you whenever you unlock something the next time you unlock something else it's going to cost you more so as you can see it went from 750 to 966 if i unlock the light cleric it's going to cost me now 1600 unity so you have to know and pay attention when you're unlocking things but that is traditions traditions in a nutshell it unlocks jobs for your village so if i have any shadow element characters or light element characters, we can make them either a Shadow Cleric or a Light Cleric, respectively. So Adaptations is like Traditions, where instead of spending Unity, you're going to be spending Amenity, the Black Resource. And Adaptations, when you pay for it, uh, it will give you four random things that you can select that will give a, a, a settlement-wide buff, to, but sometimes is not the entire settlement, it might be just for specific characters. So as an example, uh, let's see, this one, oh, actually here. So there will be adaptations that say only fire element characters. So only the characters that are fireborn will, will uh, benefit from this adaptation. Uh, I, I can't show that to you today because uh, I, have, I have two different types of adaptations. One, that affects all of my settlers, which is, I think, the best type of best type of adaptation. But typically, these are weaker than the ones that that will affect less settlers. So, which is something like this one: lifelong wisdom. An investigator character has a chance to gain a random blue personality after doing any work time activity. So, what does that mean? So only a specific character that's an investigator will be able to take advantage of it. So let me see if I can quickly find it. I, I know what it looks like, but whether I can find a character with it. What this is saying is that if you take this adaptation, uh, it will give a random blue personality after, the, after an investigator character has completed a job. So this character right here, Laura, has an aptitude called investigator. So if I pick this, any characters with this specific symbol will get benefit from this, but no one else will. So if the char if your character doesn't have it, you won't benefit from it. So once again, adaptations is a usually a settlement wide buff that 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 will apply for the entire game, uh, but it'll either affect all of your settlers or it might affect only a small subset of them. So, and each 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 time you, you, you choose something to unlock, the next time you unlock, it'll be four different random um, adaptations for you to choose from. And it might be good, and like me, where I get to increase the endurance for all my settlers, which is basically life, or it might be very, it might affect only a few amount of people. Okay. So those are the five different uh, options in the top left. And now let's talk about the top right. In the top right, we have all our, re our five resources and how much of each resource is required. Uh, resources are used for two things, when you level up and when you craft certain consumables. Then if you click on this symbol here or press I as the hotkey, this is the stockpile. This will show you all of your resources that has been stored in the game and the only thing you need to know at this point is that if you need to transfer something to a character say you want to make a woman pregnant uh, you can select the impregnation salve left click on it and then from the list to the left click left click on that specific character and it will teleport the, the the item over to them 
So I'm going to teleport it over to Laura and then I'll use, if I want, the character screen here. And Laura is right here. And see, the impregnation salve has been transferred over to her. Once she's probably done taking a bath in the bathhouse, then uh, she will use this impregnation salve. Anything you craft in the game is going to go straight to the stockpile. It won't be on the character's inventory, so bear that in mind. So sometimes when you craft something, you might just transfer it back to them afterwards. So here's like a band of trampling. So I want to give it to one of my characters. I want to give it to Dale. So I'm going to left click on the item and then I'm going to find them on the list. Left click. And as you can see, it's, it's teleported over to Dale. And then I can right click on the item and select bind. And it will go into one of the five gear slots. So now the band of trampling is bound to Dale. Uh, if Dale dies, it disappears. If Dale finds a different jewelry piece, uh, if Dale binds it, then this jewelry is destroyed. It just goes away. Okay, so that's the stockpile. Let's keep talking about the options in the top right. So the sun and moon tracks the passage of time. We have the play pause button. If you want to pause and resume the game, all you have to do is press that button or you can press the space bar. Then you have uh, the game speeds, slow, normal, fast. And the hotkeys to increase speed is E, while Q is to slow down time. Then you have the question mark. Uh, and the main thing you'll use this for is this search option right here. So if there's something that you want to know how to make, you can click on the search button. You can either scroll up and down, which would be very slow because it's, it's a huge list, or you can just type it in. So I want to know how to make a pickaxe. So I'm going to type, start typing it in and it, it shows me, oh, uh, to, if I want to make a rock splitters, uh, copper pickaxe, I'm going to need, uh, I'm going to look at the unlock requirements on the tooltip. I need someone that's a coppersmith. I need the coppersmithy building in the settlement. And I need a character with at least, uh, I, I need at least one rock splitter, um, in the settlement to be able to do that. And then to be able to make this pickaxe I'm gonna need to look at the cost so I need four copper ingots I got 15 and I got I need one tree trunk and I have 167 so I can make almost four pickaxes but I have to remember the person I give this copper pickaxe to the requirement says that they need to be a rock splitter and I need to have at least eight mined so that's once again that's what the character panels for you can quickly look to see okay where are my rock splitters? Here's, here's a rock splitter, Hunter. And Hunter does have 13 mined. So if I made this copper pickaxe, Hunter could probably use it. Okay, so that is the question mark option. Then the envelope is to submit uh, bugs and reporting tool. I hope that's pretty self-explanatory for you. And the gear symbol is just to bring up the menu. Once again, pretty self-explanatory. The only other thing we need to talk about in the top right is any major notifications are going to appear there and uh, pay attention specifically for these these persistent ones. Uh, these are your children that have typically uh, turned uh, the age of six and uh, that means they have path points meaning that you can level them up and then uh, get like and get rid of that message. So let's take a look at the bottom right interface now. So the bottom right interface is something you're going to look at almost all the time. And it's just looking at the individual character information. So it's going from left to right, uh, left to right are all are the five uh, gear slots. So the, the top one here is the weapon. So there's no weapon equipped by this person, Ellen, because there's only a three year old. And um, then there's a, a head armor slot, a chest armor slot, a jewelry slot, and a trinket slot. So let's see if I can maybe find a different character. So here's Flynn, a 36 year old character. If you need to rename the character, we can click on that uh, area and uh, you can rename them. And then he has a scrap mace equipped. He doesn't have armor on though. He does have jewelry and he has a hammer pouch. Uh, over here, these six slots here is his inventory. So maybe over the course of gathering, uh, he will pick up, let's see, what type of gatherer is he? He is a, he's a farmer basically. So he won't actually really ever have inventory on him, but some gatherers will gather and, 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 and put their 
inventory in there when they're bringing it to a stockpile. Over here, uh, what this is, is this is their action. This is what the character is currently doing. If you, uh, you can queue up certain things for them to do. So for example, um, if I want uh, Flynn to make a bush orb. Oh man. Okay, yeah. So, so as you can see, I told him to make a bush orb. And right now he's tending a betony field, but we have it right here. A bush orb is queued up. So after he's done doing this, he's going to do this task right here. And you can queue up almost unlimited things for them to do. If you need to get rid of some of the things queued up, it's as simple as left clicking on that uh, symbol and it'll get rid of it. See? Production cancelled. And you'll get back any of the resources that you had paid for that. Uh, the one thing you can't do is you can't stop them from doing what they're doing right now. So I can I can technically draft this character, put him in a party, and manually tell him to stop, but it would just be to get him to really to move away or to fight. Uh, I can't get him to stop tending the chamomile fields until he's actually done that task. Okay, next thing here, if you ever need to, to, to uh, focus focus in on a character, uh, all you have to do is click on the portrait right here. So I click on there, and as you can see, there's Flynn, and I can zoom out now. Uh, if uh, So how about how about uh, Catherine? Catherine, where's Catherine? I can't see it on the screen. Simply click, and maybe zoom in a little bit, and, and there you go, there's Catherine. So that's what that's for. And right here is Endurance. It explains it for you, but basically Endurance is health. And usually at the bottom of any of these tooltips, it'll tell you how the game came to giving this character 56 health points. So it's because this character uh, gets 71 points for being human, 16 for being an adventurer, which is a job, uh, scoundrel, which is a specialized combat uh, job, uh, endurable, which should be this uh, condition right here, and finally, it gets a minus because uh, she's a child right now. But once she hits 16, she's going to lose that 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 pretty big negative buff to her health. You're going to be looking out for this symbol uh, often. Uh, whenever the path points hits 100, this is when you can click on it to level them up. So you can pick uh, either, I believe what's called wild paths. These give you specific personalities. Uh, these are buffs passive buffs that apply to your character, or you can pick specializations for the jobs you've assigned. So I've assigned three different jobs to Catherine. She's an entertainer. Uh, I could make her like say uh, a specialized entertainer called a bard. Uh, I can give her a passion perk, which is a, which is a buff to her entertainer job, which basically gives more amenity resource when she does entertaining. We have a fighting job and a specialized fighting job. And then if I wanted to, I can click on the uh, plus symbol. And then here are all of the basic quote unquote jobs. They call it passions in, in the game. Uh, one big tip to the game is that you don't want to give your characters too many passions, too many jobs. Otherwise, they are not going to be doing what you want them to do when you want it. So um, technically, the uh, basic adventurer and the specialized combat is all in one. So you don't have to work. That's, that's why this character has three. But most of my characters will only have at most two jobs so that they're more specialized. So they do what we need them to do. So that is that button there. Uh, over here, we talked about the crafting uh, UI over here. Then each, each individual character has their own individual crafting panel. So it will show you what that specific character can craft themselves. So once again, at the top, there are different filters you can do, but most of the time, not many characters have that many things that they can craft. So for example, this is me, uh, I'm Knight, and uh, I am a gatherer, water carrier, and cook. And uh, that gives me all of these type of things that I can craft. So I can craft some buildings, I can craft uh, consumables, primarily consumables. And as usual, uh, you just put your cursor on it and it tells you the information about the thing you want to craft. So that's the individual crafting uh, panel. Then as you can see here in this column underneath the path button, the level up button, it shows you all of your primary stats. And uh, 
the it, it shows you how much energy you've used so remember when a specific stat energy bar goes down to zero they will gain a fatal trait which will reduce that stat by one and they will usually automatically go to the place that they need to to cleanse it then in this column over here these are all the secondary stats um, and uh, so such as stride which affects movement speed or say uh, power which is how much damage they do so that just tracks it at a glance for you and then on the top here it shows all of the character I don't know how to describe it things about this character so it'll tell you about the race it'll tell you about the gender it'll tell you about their condition like how old they are what what stage of their life they're in uh, anything special like genetics so this character is gifted and they're also they get human expertise which provides specific buffs all you have to do as always is put your cursor on it spend some time reading to see what this specific character has going for them and then below it will track each individual colors uh, jobs and aptitudes and personalities that you've purchased for them through leveling up so let's let's show that off quickly so I want to give this character this over suspicious personality where basically whenever I gain a fatal self fatal trait uh, right here the, the 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 black resource there's a 25 percent chance i'll get 25 path points which once again is like experience in this game so uh it'll also give me plus one to self so it'll raise them from eight to nine and i'll get eight fortitude which is a secondary um stat and it will cost me 30 amenities so 30 of the black resource which we talked about so uh, i'm going to select it and notice the border around it is purple so it's it's, it's going to go into the black purple um row right here so let's click on it and see it's just right here so it quickly it tracks all the things you've selected all the th all the different buffs and debuffs that they've picked up over time and usually the ones with this kind of uh triangle this sharp border uh, is usually bad things so so this person is I, I'm a kleptomaniac and there's a 50% chance I'm gonna be stealing uh, industry points whenever I do anything I might even steal stuff from the uh, stockpile apparently so that's a really bad thing because I think it just yeah it just disappears so we kind of want me to die <laughs> but uh, that is the bottom right once again you're gonna be spending a lot of time in this area to end this video, we're going to talk about the bottom left area, and this is your party area. So what is the party used for? The party is used for selecting up to four individual characters, uh, turning them into a party, being able to draft them, being able to tell them exactly what you want to do. Usually it's about telling them to move to a certain part or to place or to tell them to attack a certain enemy. So how do you do that? You can individually click on a character or you can s select them from the uh, character tab up here. So, so, so for example, I want to set up a raiding party. I need my best fighters to, uh, to go fighting. So who's a fighter? I know off the top of my head, Reagan is one of my fighters because he is a berserker. So I'm going to select that character either on here or on the screen here. And then I'm going to left click on this, this symbol right here, add selected character to party. And as you can see, he's been added. If I want to select him, I just left click on him. If I want to remove him from the party, I right click on him and he'll be removed. But I want him added. Uh, I also want some more fighters. I know Seamus should be a fighter as well. He's got his bow and he's got bone caps and survivor rags. I'm going to add him to the party. Who else is a fighter in this team? I know Catherine is. Catherine is a scoundrel. So I'm going to add her to the party. And finally, uh, let's see, is Anibis a fighter? Anibis is a fighter too. I'm going to add her to the party. So the party is formed. Once again, it doesn't have to be a full party. It doesn't have to have all four people. It could be as little as one person. It could have a maximum of four people. So next, uh, if you want to draft your characters, you press R or you press this, uh, this uh, button right here. So when your characters are not fighting or actively hunting, uh, this draft button will be green. Um, and they're just going to do what they've been told to do. Like uh, they'll, they'll gather, they'll craft, what have you. If you want to do something special, like say, say the village starts getting attacked, you can draft them, 
by either once again, left clicking on the draft button or pressing the R button and then select one of them and then just right click on the, on, on the place you want them to go to. And you'll, you'll see the entire team goes there. It'll show on the screen the path that that specific character that you've selected will go. Uh, I can, at this point, press the tab button and cycle through this uh, team and uh, they will go there. So at, at, at this point, I, I can tell people like Anibis or team, I want you to attack this cow. And then the whole team will, will, will start attacking it. All weapons have an auto attack, uh, but all of most of them have a ability that you can trigger. All you have to do while they're in combat is left click on the ability and then left click on the target. So, so this horse is not um, aggressive to us right now, but I'm going to have Reagan attack it. And then I'm going to select the tendon rupture ability and left click and then uh, once he's able to, he will he will then cast it on that specific target. So that because we have so many guys, that that horse died really quickly. But uh, that is drafting. Um, make sure you don't forget when characters are drafted, uh, because if you've turned on draft manually, they will just stay there until you undraft them. So always remember to make sure this banner here is uh, green. So I'm going to press R and it'll undraft them and they'll go do their own stuff. So sometimes you might want to have a party pre-set up like, like I have here in case your village gets attacked. You can quickly uh, draft your entire team and, and, and tell them to go to, to wherever is being attacked instead of manually uh, telling people, hey, uh, here, join the party, join the party and, and, and manually telling them to attack. So that is my UI guide for the first men. I went over my 10 minutes, I'm quite sure. I hope it helped you out though. If you have any questions about the UI, please leave any uh, questions in the comments below. Uh, once again, check out the rest of my channel for, for other guides. I have my beginners, 15 beginner tips guides. I also have how to grow your settlement guide. Uh, check out the rest of my channel for other videos on the first men, video games, board games, and other fun things. Thanks for watching me. And I'll see you next time.